Welcome to Waters World. I'm your host, Jesse Waters. Before we begin, I'd like to make a major announcement. Waters World is officially a weekly show. Every Saturday at 8 p.m. and 11 p.m., we're going to be right here. So thanks to all the viewers that watched. We heard you. So we're just going to give the people what they want. Also moving up in the world, President-elect Donald Trump. Only 13 days until the inauguration. Earlier, we spoke with incoming counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, welcome to Waters World. Thank you, Jesse. One of the things I like the most about your boss is this, tweeting. Wow, the ratings are in and Arnold Schwarzenegger got swamped by comparison to the ratings machine of Donald J. Trump, blah, 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 blah. But who cares? He supported Kasich and Hillary. Doesn't he still own a piece of the show? He, no, he does. It's the Donald Trump and Mark Burnett, where the genius is behind The Apprentice. He does. But he's making the point right. that uh, without him there, it's not going to be the ratings bonanza top of the ratings uh, pr blockbuster show that it was. Yes, always involved with the ratings. Kind of reminds me of a guy named Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I want to talk to you about Joe Biden. He's been out there giving some interviews. We all love Joe, but he has a lot to say. Listen to some of Joe's oh, yes. advice here. Take a look. Grow up, Donald. Grow up. Time to be an adult. You're president. You got to do something. Show us what you have. No, this is the same guy that was dropping F-bombs yes. and running around with squirt guns and getting a little handsy there in the Capitol. D does this just roll off your back at this point. Indeed it does. This is also the guy who was the number two in the Democratic Party and our federal government, Jesse, over the last eight years when the Democrat, Democratic Party has been completely decimated. Yep. They've lost 68 House seats on his watch. Two-thirds of the Republican Congress was elected since 2010. That tells you something. What was 2010? Oh, that was <laughs> the first midterm election after the disaster that was Obamacare right. took hold. And uh, he's also presided over losing the majorities in the House and the Senate, the governorships. They've lost over 1,000 state, state legislative seats. So the, uh, the Biden legacy in terms of the electoral um, map and in terms of, I think, the political situation is not the best. Yeah, um, I so think he called Obamacare a big effing deal to the president. I, I think he didn't realize what that really meant. What that really meant. We, <laughs> and we agree. It was. Yeah. That's the way people feel by it. And uh, that's, you know, right. look, that's why Donald Trump ran successfully on repealing and replacing it, building the wall and having Mexico pay for it, uh, and stopping the advance of ISIS. And speaking of Obamacare, is the plan still repeal and replace? Because President-elect Donald Trump sent out a tweet the other day telling Republicans to be careful because you don't want to take a ax here and just amputate this thing and then shoulder all the blame. It's got to be a political calculation. Is it still repeal and replace or is there a new wrinkle here? It's repeal and replace. And I was with Vice President-elect Pence on Capitol Hill on, t on Wednesday when, this, when he was discussing this with many different leaders and then had a meeting even with um, minority leader Chuck Schumer uh, on the issue. <laughs> Emphasis on minority. Emphasis on that. But look, there are very specific things that President Trump wants to do with respect to health care. He wants you to be able to buy your health insurance across state lines. Right. It's ridiculous that you can't do that now the way you buy auto insurance and so many goods and services in our Amazon Prime life. Yes. Uh, he wants to make sure that there are health savings accounts so that you own your own health insurance. It has your name on it and you control the spending. You know, Jesse, nobody ever goes to the car wash before they return a rental car. They don't really take <laughs> care of it that way. If the health care is in your name and you control the spending, I think people will be much more savvy health, health consumers and frankly, they'll have better coverage. So will you guys be prepared when the media and the Democrats trot out these victims of the repeal and replace situation because you know they're going to have crying babies and mothers suffering by these mean mean Donald Trump Republicans. Are you guys prepared for that? Ready for that because we don't want to harm people. Right. And we understand that there are a couple million people on the Affordable Care Act who like what they have. We don't want them to be uncovered, but they're also undercovered. And there are so many people who have been harmed by the Affordable Care Act who were happy with what they had right. before this, this uh, turkey of a law was passed. Right. Jesse, these are people saying, well, wait a second, I thought that was to help people who didn't have coverage. Now I have higher premiums in a place like Arizona, 116% increase, Pennsylvania, 53% increase. The numbers don't lie. People are saying I have fewer choices, less access, worse quality, higher prices. The other thing is we're going to have stories of our own. Good. I've actually asked members to collect stories 
uh, horror stories on the other side of the ledger in their districts mm -hmm. and report to us. What are you hearing from small business owners? What are you hearing from the single mom who thought the Affordable Care Act would help her and she voted for President Obama twice and now has voted for Donald Trump? Why? Because now she just has two jobs that are 26, 27 hours because the employers have refused to give her the full-time job so that she gets health benefits. Now she has two jobs, no health coverage, and less time with her kids. It sounds like you're all ready to go on that. Now the transition. My belief, Sterling transition. You guys rolled out a series of symbolic yet substantive jobs announcements, keeping jobs here in this country, which is great news. Also, a very diligent yet suspenseful rollout of some of these cabinet picks, and I think they're all grade A people. But now it seems like the Democrats are wrestling this narrative away from the great transition, and now they, all they talk about is Russia. Russia, 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 hacking mm -hmm. and everything like that. And you know the Democrats, they wanted to lose the Cold War for decades, and now it looks like they want to restart it. Is Donald Trump concerned about Russian hacking? It doesn't seem like a top priority for him. Well, let's make very clear, Jesse, a couple things. He's receiving a, a briefing, intelligence briefing, uh, on Friday, he will have received an intelligence briefing from the top officials. He'll take that very seriously. He welcomed them to come and do that. The Democrats are so are so much tougher on Russia in just the last eight minutes, or yeah. I'll even say eight weeks since the election, than yeah. they've been in eight years. Yeah. All of a sudden, we've gone from President Obama saying to President Putin this summer, knock it off, which I basically say to my kids when they're arguing in the minivan, <laughs> um, to we're going to expel Russian operatives before we even have the report completed. Yeah. And I would, I would also point out to your audience that two things. One is President Trump. Uh, we're against any any foreign interference in our governance. But a couple other things came out of that intelligence hearing on Capitol Hill uh, earlier this week, Jesse. One is that cybersecurity in this country is terrible. It's yes. totally underserved. It's a very serious issue that we need to do better on. It's been ignored largely for the last eight years. Number two, if you go back and you look at the full testimony, Donald Trump was proven right about a number of things. They said that they, they're not tying it directly to the election results right. and, and that um, the DNC did not accede to the FBI's very simple request to turn over their servers or make the information available so the DNC was hacked. We're talking about a yeah. couple of DNC operatives' emails here. And, and I, I, think, they, I think the only hacking that really affected the election was Hillary's cough. Well, there you go. Because I, I, remember, I don't see any evidence that this thing affected any vote tallies. Now, I know we got to wrap this right. up, but the inauguration coming up, are you going to save me a dance at the ball? Big time. Big yeah? league. Big league yes. ball? The, the deplora ball? Is a deplora ball. All right. We'll have some fun there. Please come and see Good. us. I'll try not to step on your toes. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you, Jesse. Coming up next, as Donald Trump begins to move into the White House, the Congressional Black Caucus is asking for slavery reparations. We'll debate. And later, we track down the man who harassed Ivanka Trump and her children on a JetBlue flight. You harassed a woman with her baby on a flight. You proud of that? Real class act, aren't you?